James the Red Engine by the Reverend W. Audrey. James was a new engine who lived, on, who lived at a station at the other end of the line. End of the line. He has two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. They're, they weren't as small as Gordon's, and they weren't, and they weren't small as Jane, as Thomas's. You're a splendid mixed traffic engine. You're a special mixed tra traffic engine, Sir Tom had told him. You, you'll be able to pull coaches or freight cars quite easily. But freight cars aren't, aren't easy things to manage. And on his first day on Sodor, they had pushed him down the hill into a field. Into a field. He had been ill. He had been ill after his accident. But now he has new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The red paint will cheer you up after your accident, said Sir Top Hat. Said Sir Top Hat. You are to push coaches today, and Edward will help. Shall help you. Together, together they went. They went together to find the coaches. Be careful with the coaches, James, said Edward. They don't like being bumped. Freight cars are silly and noisy. They need to be bumped and taught to behave. But coaches get cross and will and won't get back at you. They took the coaches to the platform where two where, where both coupled in the front on on in front. Sir Tom Matt, the station master, and some little boys all came to admire James. Shining rods and red paint. James was pleased. I'm a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. <sighs> the station, Sir Tom Matt, the station master, and the conductor all jumped. And a sound, and a shower, a shower of water fell on Sir Tom Matt's nice new top hat. Just then, the whistle blew, and James thought they were they had better go. So they went. Go on, go on, he puffed Edward. Don't push, don't push, puffed Edward. For he, for he, for he did not like starting quickly. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast, grumbled the coaches. But James didn't listen. He wanted to run away before Sir Tom Matt could call him back. He didn't even, he didn't even, even want to stop at the first station. Edward tried hard to stop, but the two coaches in front were beyond the platform before they stopped, and they had to go back to let the patches out. Lots of people, lots of people came to came to look at James, and as no one seemed to know about Sir Tom Matt's top hat, he felt happier. Felt happier. Presently, they came to a junction where Thomas, where Thomas, where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches, Annie and Clavin. Hello, James, said Thomas. Feeling better? That's good. Ah, that's my conductor's whistle. I must go. Sorry, I can't stay. I don't know what Sir Tom Matt would do without me to run my branch line. And off he puffed, importantly, with his two coaches into a tunnel. Leaving the junction, they passed, they passed the field where James had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back yet. James whistled, but they paid no attention. They chattered through Edward's station yard and started to climb up the hill beyond. It's very steep. It's very steep, puffed James. I've done it before. I've done it before, puffed Edward. But see, but we'll do it. It's steep, but we'll do it. Two inches puffed. Move together as they pulled the train up the big hill. They both rest at the station. 
Edward told J James how Gordon had got stuck on the hill, and he had to he had to push him up. James laughed so much that he got hiccups and surprised an old lady with a black bonnet. He dropped all his her parcels and two porters, and the station master and the conductor had to run after her, picking them up. James was quiet. James was quiet at the shed next day. That night, he enjoyed his day, but he was a little afraid of what Sir Tom would say about his top hat. The next morning, Sir Tom Hatt spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I'll take away your red coat and I shall have you painted blue. James didn't like it at all. Didn't like that at all. And he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Come along, come along, he called rudely. All in good time, all in good time, the coaches grumbled. Don't talk, come on, answered James. And with the coaches squealing and grumbling, he snorted into the station. After him, he snorted into the station. James was cross that morning. Sir Thomas had spoken to him. The coaches dawdled, dawdled. And worst of all, he had to fetch his own coaches. Gordon never does, never does, he thought. And he was painted blue, only painted blue. A splendid engine like me shouldn't, should never fetch his own, to fetch his own coaches. And he puffed and snorted around to the front of the train and backed up to it with a rude bump. Oh, groaned the coaches. That was, that was so bad. To make James even crosser, he then had to take take the coaches to a different platform, where no one could come near come near him as he stood there. Sir Tom Matt was in his office. The station master was at the upper end of the end end of the train with the conductor, and even the little boys stood a long way off. James felt lonely. I'll show them, he said to himself. I think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. And as soon as the conductor's whistle blew, he started off with a tremendous jerk. Come on, come on, he puffed to the coaches, squealing and, gr and groaning in protest. This child clattered over the switches into the open line. Hurry, hurry, puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, said the coaches. And indeed, they were going so fast, they, sw they, sli they, swayed, they swayed from side to side. James laughed and tried and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop! We're going to stop! We're going to stop! They said as J and James found himself going slower and slower. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are on. On leak in the pipe. Pipe? Most likely, you banged the coaches enough to make a leak in every anything. The conductor and the driver got down and looked at the brake pipes all on the train. At last, they found a hole where a rough treatment has, had made a joint work loose. How should we mend it? asked said the conductor. James's driver thought for a moment. We'll do it with newspaper and a leather shoelace. Well, where is the shoelace coming from? asked the conductor. 
we haven't got one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the conductor made everyone got out. Does everyone have a sh leather shoelace? They asked. They all said no, except one. One man with a bowler hat, whose name was Jim Iyer Jumings, who tried to hit his feet. You have a leather shoelace there, I see, sir, said the conductor. Please give it to me. I won't, said Joe Doming. Then I'm afraid the train will just have to stay here where it is, said the conductor sternly. Then, then the passengers told the conductor, the driver, and the fireman what a bad railway it was. But the conductor climbed into the cab and his driver his cap and his dri and the driver and fireman made James let off steam. Then they told this told Jeremiah Jobbing what a bad man what a, he was a bad man indeed. Instead, instead, at last he gave him the laces and the driver tied a pad pad of newspaper lightly around the hole and James was able to pull the train. He was a sadder and wiser James, and took care never to bump coaches again. James hadn't. James didn't see Sir Todd Matt for several days. They left James alone in the shed, and wasn't even allowed allow him to pull out and push coaches or freight cars in the yard. Oh dear, he thought sadly. Oh dear, he thought sadly. I'll never be allowed. I'll never be allowed out anymore. I shall have to stay in this shed for always, and no one will ever see my red coat again. Oh dear, oh dear. And James began to cry. Just then, Sir Tom Heck came along. Oh, I see it. I see you're sorry, James, he said, and I hope, I hope now that you are, that you will be a better engine. I've been given, you have been giving me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway, and I, and I don't like it, at, like that at all. I'm very sorry, sir. I'll try to behave, hard to behave. That's a good engine, said Sir Top Matt. I want you to pull, pull some freight cars for me. Wrong, 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 and find them. Find them. So James puffed happily. Here are your freight cars, James, said a little tank engine. Have you? Have you got some shoelaces ready? And he ran off laughing rudely. Oh, 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 the cars. The cars, said the freight cars as James backed back up to them. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started and started and started. No notice. Come along, come along. As soon as the conductor was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. On he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the cars. But James didn't care. But James didn't care. And he, pu and he pulled the screeching freight cars sternly out of the yard. yard. The freight cars tried, tried hard to make him give up, but he kept, but he still kept on. 
sometimes their brakes slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. Sometimes they would stop, they would have to stop and to put trouble right, put the trouble right. And each time James would start again. Dust dust mind not not to let the freight cars beat him. Get up! Get up! You can't pull us! You can't pull us! You can't! You can't! You can't! cried the freight cars. I can and I will, and I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but steady, he pulled them along the line. At last, he saw Gordon's hill ahead. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We will go, will go fast, and we'll get, we'll get them up before they know. Know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster and faster. So James went faster and faster. And soon they were halfway up the top of, at top of the hill. The hill. Way up the hill. I'm doing it. I'm doing. He panicked. But it was hard work. Will the top never come? He thought. When, with a sudden jerk, it came. He jerked. They all came easily. I've done it! I've done it! He puffed triumphantly. Hooray! He thought. It's easy now. But his driver shot off steam. They've done it again! He said. We left our tail behind. The last ten freight cars were running backwards down the hill. The ink. The coupling was snapped. But the conductor was brave, very carefully and cleverly. He made them stop. Then he got out and walked down the line with his wet red flag. That's why it was easy, said James as he backed down up the other freight cars carefully down. What silly things freight cars are. There might have been a problem. Meanwhile, the conductor stopped Edward, who was push pushing three coaches. Should I help you, James? called Edward. No, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. So James was ready. Then with a... What? 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 He was off. You can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Puffed. He puffed. He puffed and he puffed as hard as he could. You're doing well, whistled Edward. You're doing what? You're doing well, whistled Edward as James slowly struggled up the hill with clouds of smoke and steam pouring from his funnel. I've done it! I've done it! He petted and disappeared over the top. They reached their station. They reached their station safely. James was resting in the yards when Edward puffed by with a cheerful, cheerful, then, walking towards him, over the rails, was James saw Sir Topham Hat. Oh dear, what will he say? He asked himself sadly. But Sir Topham Hat was smiling. I was in James's train and saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome freight cars on, on the line behaved. After that, you deserve your, to keep your red coat. Sometimes, Gordon and Henry slept slept in James's shed, and and would and would talk about nothing but shoelaces. James would talk about edges who got stuck up, who got shut up in hills, shut up in tunnels, and, and stuck on hills. But they wouldn't listen, 
and kept on talking and laughing. You talk too much, little James, Gordon would say. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine, I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, I need, they need two engines. engines. Think of that. I pulled the express for years and never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct, said Gordon proudly. Every wise engine knows that the Singman works the switches to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was proud that he had forgotten. Wake up, James! He said next morning, It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Our jobs? Ah, well. We all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches ready. Don't be late. Don't be late. James went. James? James went to get the coaches. They were now all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily, We're going away! We're going away! I wish it was coming with you, said James, and I would love to pull express and go flying along the line. He left, he left them in the station, and went back back to the yard just as Gordon, with much noise and puffing of steam, backed up to the train. Sir Tom Man was on the train with the other important people, and as soon as they heard the conductor's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me! Look at me! He puffed, and the coaches glided after him out of the station. Doot, 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 doot. Goodbye, little Edward. See you tomorrow. James watched the, watched the train disappear around the curve and then went back to work. He pushed the freight cars into their proper places then and went to fetch the coaches for another train. To another train. To another train. He brought the coaches. He brought the coaches to the platform. He brought the coaches to the platform, and just being and ju and was just being uncoupled when he heard a muffled, quiet, <sighs> and there was Gordon trying to s slide into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No. No, it it wasn't it was lost for me, he answered crossly. I was switched off to the main line into onto the hoop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James brightly. Meanwhile the passengers hurried to the ticket office. We want our money back, they shouted. Everyone was making so much noise, but Sir Tomac climbed to the on the trolley and blew the conductor's whistle so loudly that everyone stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new engine at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. I will pull it. You will, you will pull it? Will you pull it for me? Pull it for us, James. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir. So James was cu coupled on, and everyone got in again. 
Do your best, James, said Sir Tom Matt. And just then, the whistle blow, and he, and he had to run, run to get in. Come along, come along, puffed James. James? You're pulling us well, you're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Stations and bridges flashed by, the passers leaned out of the window and cheered. And they soon reached the tournaments. The tournaments. Everyone said thank you to James. James. Well done, James, said Sir Tom Matt. You would like to pull the express sometimes. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, said James answerly. The next day, when James came by, Go was shutting freight cars in the yard. I would some I would like some I like some quiet work for it, James, he said. I'm teaching these car freight cars manners. You did well with the coaches I hear. Good. We'll show them. And he gave the freight cars a bump, making them cry. Oh, 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 oh. James and Gordon are now good friends. And James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about shoelaces. And they and they are both quite agreed on the subject with freight cars. Two. With freight.